this is Harry Howell that I am with today, and he hello. lives. Hello. Why don't you tell me something about yourself, Harry? Start Washington. with your name. Start with your name. Well, I'm Harry. My name is Harry Howell. I live in Longview, Washington. Go to the Cowlitz Valley Congregation. Uh, I'm retired. I graduated high school the summer of Woodstock. <laughs> And Harry, I understand that um, when you were first married, you and your wife, uh, Janice, actually began life by living off the grid on some property that you bought. Is that correct? Yes, we began life at, I was 40. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, we, we bought some property and it was like totally off the grid. We had no, we had running water, but we did not have potable water. Uh, we had no electricity that uh, we had generators, but but uh, other than that, no electricity. Okay. So tell me about uh, how you manage your water supply. We had a cistern. It was from the kitchen window. You could look up the hill, and and there, like above our roof line, was a, a big cistern that you could fill with water. The um, we had a well pump laying in the creek uh, down at the bottom of the hill. And then we had uh, water that pumped, uh, a hose running from that well pump, pumped up into the cistern and uh, we'd flip a switch on the back porch and it would uh, fill the cistern and that would, uh, uh, and then the cistern would gravity feed to our house. And that was our, our water that flushed toilets and we took baths in and, and some of that kind of stuff. We did dishes in it also, but we used uh, copious amounts of bleach when, when we used that, that water. The line to the house would uh, get airlocks in it if you ever let the cistern run dry. So then I, I, at uh, some point I fixed the system up so I could back flush that, that uh, line running from the cistern to the house and uh, take all the air bubbles out and we'd be good to go. Great. And how did you manage your potable water? There was a, um, a spring in the side of a hill, downhill from us. It was on our neighbor's property. <clears throat> and so all the hill folk, uh, that's what we called ourselves, we would gather at the spring. Janice would get all the news on the hill while I was at work. I'd come home and she'd tell me that so-and-so's cowed had a calf and this and that and all that kind of good stuff and uh, that but that's where we got our, our potable water uh, for coffee and and uh, making ice and drinking and that kind of stuff and you'd what fill jugs or uh, you know some sort of a yeah we, we bought jugs and, yeah we were regular customers at mcclendon's and eagle hardware so we bought jugs for water and jugs for kerosene and jugs for gasoline. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Okay. So tell me about your heat. You're talking about kerosene and gasoline. How did you heat the place? There's a little wood stove in the living room. And uh, so there was a lot of split and wood and stuff that went on. Um, and then uh, <laughs> my sister and brother-in-law sent us a wall heater one time. And, uh, and, I, um, and I hooked it all up to um, uh, propane. We had propane in the place. I hooked it up to propane, and Janice was in the other room. I turned it on, and it looked like the launch pad at Cape Canaveral with these flames going up in the ceiling. So, so I turned it off and called Janice in, and I said, I, I don't think this is right. Come in and tell me what you think. And... Uh, she came in, I turned it on, and she <laughs> uh, she didn't think it was right either. And uh, uh, so I turned it off, and it, they'd sent us the wrong uh, wall here. It was vented for, it was set up for uh, natural gas instead of propane and pain. So <clears throat> we got it fixed, and that's that was uh, what we would use mostly. Sure. Okay, what about electricity? Did you have electricity at that place? We had generators. We had one, it was a construction 
suction generator, which was really cheap and really loud. And so you couldn't hear yourself talk when it was running, but we would use it um, for some of the heavy duty stuff where we need, need electricity. And then we had another one that was a lot quieter that we would just use for lights and uh, for the most part. It was a little quiet Honda thing. Okay, great. Um, I did you raise your own food? How did you do in terms of gardening and you know that kind of stuff? We did not have a garden. We didn't. We weren't doing this to save the planet. Um, we didn't have a garden. We, we did get eggs. We we bought chickens and. Um, we would use their eggs. We, we bought a chicken manual and also a goat manual down at the feed and grain. And the first thing, uh, first chapter in the goat manual or in the chicken manual said, don't name any chickens that you plan to eat. So the first thing my wife did was name all the chickens. And, um, but, but we, we did eat their, we didn't name the eggs, I guess. So we, we did eat the eggs. <laughs> and how many goats did you? We had, Three, we had the first one was named Billy and uh, not very original, but that was his name. And uh, when Billy died, I, it was a really hard place to dig holes in because there's, you know, you go down six inches and there's a big rock. And um, so I picked a spot underneath a big, huge rock. It was on a side hill and dug his shallow grave out for Billy, put him in it covered him up some, and then I pulled the big rock that was just up above him over onto the top of Billy. And Billy and Treble, our, our Springer Spaniel, were really good friends. So Treble laid on Billy's rock forever. I mean, it, it, it was at least like a week later, you'd look outside and there'd be Treble on Billy's rock. It was, it was very sad that uh, Billy went away. Now the other two were Buck and Sally, and uh, I don't exactly remember what happened to them, but at some point they went away too. Oh, Buck and Sally, we were down working on the chicken coop one time. And uh, our, our you know, chicken coop is where we were working. And the, uh, the cabin we were living in was up, on, up above the roof line of the chicken coop by quite a bit. And we look up there and looking out the bedroom window was Buck and Sally standing on our bed, looking out the window at us down there working on the chicken, which was, was also the goat place. When, you know, one side of it was for the goats, the other side was for the chickens, and they were, they were checking us out down there to work on it. Supervising. Great, I love it. That's super. Um, okay. Uh, did you have enough electricity that you could um, use the internet or phones or anything like that? What did you do for communication? I'm a ham radio operator and the mobile ham radio stuff runs off of 12 volts. And we did have a big outboard motor battery, 12 volt um, uh, deep cycle. We had one of those, so I, I got the ham radio going and uh, <clears throat> And I had a scanner that didn't take hardly any power at all. And uh, so, and then I had, um, the internet was just kind of coming in then. You could do email over the internet, but there was no World Wide Web or any of that kind of stuff. So I was using the internet before the World Wide Web, uh, www. And um, we did that. We had phones. Uh, we were able to get power, or phone lines up to all the houses on the hill. But uh, we didn't have, we didn't have power lines up, and uh, that was pretty much Janice would listen to my scanner, <laughs> uh, to the scanner when I was on my way home, and, and so what I started doing is I'd say, well, well I'm going by the uh, you know this, the park where they land the model airplanes and stuff, and so she'd know where I was on the on the road, and so she'd plan dinner so that <laughs> while I was coming home because. Uh, so she'd know, because uh, she knew when I was going to get there. So you worked and she was basically running the the little farm that you had there. Yeah, she had, um, she had a, a couple jobs at different points, but 
but not always. And uh, she was also going to school at that time, oh. finishing out a degree. Um, oh. And so, yeah, so she would, she wouldn't be home all day long. We did, uh, we also had to, had to go to laundromat, which she did that while I was at work. So how long were you there? How long did you stay off grid? Uh, I think it was three years. It seemed more like three decades at some point. But uh, the, the first year was kind of an adventure, and then it, then it got old. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in, in the winter, we'd, we'd have to chip ice to do some stuff. And, and so we had these big feed barrels underneath the um, the gutters outside and we'd catch water and then we'd chip ice to make coffee and all kinds of stuff. But So every winter, the lines would freeze up going to the cistern and then about spring, they'd open up again and we'd, we'd be back at it. Did you do any hunting or fishing? Or did you buy did you buy other food that you needed? There was a lot of game there. But I had uh, I had friends that I went hunting with, and so I went ahead and went on my hunting trips. And then we had uh, uh, and I got some meat while uh, while we were living there, but it wasn't from the, from the farm. We saw lots of the, of the game. There was, uh, oh, I saw the grouse and deer and a bobcat. And, and there was this herd of elk that would hang, hang out down by Orville Road. And I'd have to honk the horn to get him off, get him out of the way so I could go to get out to pavement and go to work. Um, so there, there was a lot of uh, wildlife. I, I'm missing some, I know, but uh, anyway. Uh, but no, I we, we didn't get any meat yeah. from uh, we didn't eat off the land exactly. So Harry, if if somebody wanted to live off grid, what advice would you give them? It's a lot of work, um, and you know, and especially if you're in a wheelchair and. Um, but, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I would I would subscribe to magazines like Mother Earth News and that kind of stuff. And, and uh, uh, we did a lot of that. Um, yeah, it's going to get old after a while. But I uh, I, I would say do it if, if you get the chance. Um, If you had to go back to living off the grid now, what would you miss the most in the lifestyle that you would leave here? I would miss having groceries delivered to your door. <laughs> I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I, you know, if, if I have more money now, so I'd probably do some things different. Uh, I'd have better generators and, and uh, solar panels and some of that kind of stuff. But um, um, I don't know. Well, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Is there anything else you want to say? No, it was uh, it, it was a lot of fun and a lot of work, and, and I'm really glad we did it. It's a lot of fond memories, but uh, I don't want to go back anytime soon. I understand that. Thank you so much, Harry. You bet. <laughs>